Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shala Malawson. Some children in Harare can now realize their dreams of becoming a professional footballer. Our reporter Jairo Saunyama gives us the story. A Harare man, George Jojo, has established a soccer academy to teach children from underprivileged families how to play the world's most popular game. The academy accommodates children between the ages of 2 and 12. ATV visited the academy's training ground where Jojo spoke about the project. We are now at Notora from this community, this is a community, but some they come as far as Norton and Ufakose. These guys have heard about the East Soccer Academy, so they always uh, want to come and be part of us. The academy also accommodates female players. Some of the trainees now hold regular positions in their school teams. I did St. George's College. I was trained last year as a doctor right striker. Jojo, a qualified coach who does most of the training, recently hired an assistant coach. However, the academy is facing some financial problems. Reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwean boxers are in Botswana hoping to clinch the African Boxing Championship. Chris Bentavura tells us more. A team of nine Zimbabwean boxers are in Botswana for a two-week African Championship boxing tournament. The tournament will run from 9 to 22 June. ATV caught up with the team during their final training before their departure. We prepared more than enough. We are really ready and the boxers themselves, I can see they've got plenty of confidence uh, in themselves. So this time around we are bringing something from gold down the line. Some of the boxers are upbeat about the forthcoming matches. Well, currently I'm the champion in Zimbabwe and I'm going to hold the Zimbabwe flag in Botswana. So six youth games are 2010 in Swaziland and I came with a bronze medal. So I'm expecting something from Botswana. Uh, we're hopefully going to come up with something great because we've been training so hard during all this time and we're looking forward to better results. The team received a financial boost from a local transport company. We are the power behind these boxing guys and what actually inspired us is they approached us and they asked if ever we could help them and then as a community loving company we also thought it wise to give back to the community so as a form of giving back to the community expecting nothing in return from those guys we just hope for the best in them the company pledged to increase sponsorship for the team if they win the tournament uh, we don't intend for a once off thing we are just hoping for more Boxers to come, it's going to be a long term thing. Meanwhile, Zimbabwe Boxing Association is set to host the Zone 6 tournament in October this year. Well, we are looking forward to having or hosting one tournament this year, somewhere around October. Reporting for ATV, I'm Chris Pentavra in Vlawayo, Zimbabwe. A Harare musician is leading the way by mixing gospel music with hip-hop. Jairo Saunyama reports. A 27-year-old Harare musician, Mudiwa Mutandwa, has taken the capital by storm with his new nine-track hip-hop gospel album titled Magnet. The album, which has been topping the charts on local radio stations for 23 weeks, is the first ever hip-hop gospel album to be released in Zimbabwe. The album breaks new ground in the gospel music sector. ATV recently caught up with Mutandwa, who narrated his musical journey. It's being a pioneer is a good thing, but at the same time, you realize that you are facing a lot of problems because you are breaking, you are breaking uh, strong, 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 strongholds. The devil has actually put strongholds, especially in that industry. It's actually associated with, with secular music. And being a first gospel artist who is singing hip-hop, it's pretty difficult, but thank God I had to make a breakthrough. 
Some Christians supported the introduction of hip hop gospel in the country. I've had a uh, chance to listen to people like Lecrae and stuff like that, and I really love their passion and, you know, the fact that they they speak the word when they're rapping and stuff like that. And I'd like to see that as well in Zimbabwe, you know, to have you know all these gospel artists that are rising, and which is a good thing because I know it's a new revolution as well. Young people, looking at it, they are the ones that go for sure. They are the ones that lead, that that need the word more, and that way they are gonna get it. The people of uh, like our age, we really love this music. It brings us close to God because we are young, and this generation requires that. But as long as the genre praises God, there is no harm. Uh, one thing that I would want to point out is uh, if you look at the youth of today, they are leaving their traditional churches where their fathers, their grandfathers used to worship and they are moving away to new churches. And the only way you can catch them is when you do exactly what also excites them. However, Mutando is facing a lot of criticism from some Christians. I met a lot of criticism. Some would say that, you know, hip hop is associated with the devil, this, 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 this and that. But, well, honest, the honest truth is that I felt in my spirit, in my heart, it's my mandate to go preach the gospel in this way because I've understood the new wave of the spirit that we need to approach these youth in the way they understand. The first commercial gospel rap album titled Bible Break was released by United yeah. States artist uh -huh. Stephen Wiley in 1985. Reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. Jesus said to the light to the world. It's been a long time since I've been in the war, been around with the play, but there ain't no life. Loaded above with the truth and the life, oh, he's the way that... Over 200 orphans are benefiting from a feeding scheme in Kambuzuma, a high-density suburb. Robert Tafumane gives us the report. Some 12 years ago, a Kambuzuma woman had voices in her sleep, constantly telling her to look after children of a late neighbor. She ignored the voice and one night, she found herself sleepwalking to the neighbor's house to the shock of the lone children who thought she was a witch. ATV visited the woman, Leti Mija, who spoke about her calling. After two weeks, Every day at around midday, orphans and vulnerable children in Kambuzuma start trickling into Mija's home for food. Mija, who now feeds over 200 children, also teaches them good manners and Bible studies before they partake their meals daily. Mija is now appealing for clothes and blankets from well wishers to assist these needy children. Reporting for ATV, I'm Robert Afumane, Harare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.